but there are a variety of other orders out there as well that might be applicable in some situations. Uh, can you give us just a brief overview right. of what those might be? Yeah, I, I, I'm glad to. And so to start, I want to uh, talk about so each of the types of orders that we've discussed in these videos have been uh, civil protection orders. Um, and that's a certain kind of order. It, it means something specific to the court when you talk about a, a protection order. What it means is it's part of one of these uh, special proceed proceedings that's outside of the civil rules where someone goes to court to ask for an order to be imposed. And that is the whole cause of action, right? Um, that is different than, for example, a no contact order. A no contact order is often part of, or, or generally is part of a, a criminal case where if someone is charged with a crime that somehow involves risks to others, or for example, if it was assault, or some other reason that they're not able, the court orders them to not have communication or contact with someone, that might have the same effect as a, no, as a protection order, mm -hmm. uh, but it's different. It's called a no contact order. And the, the difference, the main difference between those two is that is a companion to a criminal charge and the party that's in charge of that order is the court itself. So even if you're, if you are the victim in a crime uh, and the, the defendant in that crime uh, has been charged and ordered to no, have no contact with you, mm -hmm. you can tell the court, I think this order should be dropped, but it's not up to you. You have to explain to the court why you think the court the order sh should be dropped and it's up to the judge to decide whether or not that's the case that's because that's a that's a matter sp uh, specifically within the the court's uh, authority and decision making that's very different than if you go and ask the court to put it in order you're the one that's in charge of it. you can say i changed my mind we're done i don't need this anymore but that's not the case in a criminal case they might do that but it's very much up to the judge and i have seen many times when someone comes in uh, exasperated that there's still this order that they don't want to be protected by, but the court doesn't always lift it. And sometimes uh, protected parties are frustrated and don't understand why, but that's the situation that there is. Another one, uh, another type of order, that's actually very broad, but is used, the language, the name is used often to mean other things. Uh, and when I say it's used to mean other things, what I mean is that people engaging or interacting with the courts will say, I need a restraining order. But that's not a restraining order um, is something that's part of a larger action, right? It's not its own separate thing like these uh, protection orders. And while a protection order will restrain someone's ability to do things if it's granted, uh, and that way it is an order that restrains things. A restraining order uh, has to do with uh, a, different, uh, a different part of civil procedure where if there's a larger lawsuit, um, one of the parties might go to the court and say that I'm filing this suit, but also uh, this is gonna take a year to figure out before we can even have our trial. In the meantime, the court should do these things. And the court, the showing on those is that there's going to be irreparable harm if the court won't act. This is something that happens, for example, uh, our state has sought to impose restraining orders against the federal government many times over the last several years, right? Sometimes they're successful and that might be an injunction that limits uh, a federal practice from continuing. That doesn't mean that that case is over. It means while the case is going, here's the ground rules. Mm -hmm. Similar thing in a family law matter, right? You might say, uh, file for a divorce. And a divorce in King County, if you file your petition tomorrow, you'll probably get scheduled for a trial about a year away. I'd say 11 months to a year, last I checked, right? What do you do between now and then if you have three kids and all these properties and you don't know what to do with them? Someone might say, I'm gonna do whatever I want until there's a court order that says otherwise. That might not work, but that's, you know, there's nothing to limit their ability to do certain things. So a restraining order can be sought in a family law action to do the same kind of thing. While the case is going on, these are the restraints that should be in place. And in a family law case, it's very common that there are mutual restraints, for example, that limit either person's ability to do things. In some counties, like just north of us in Snohomish County, when a divorce action is filed or something involving um, a parenting plan, there's an immediate restraining order that goes in as soon as it's filed. And that's automatic with the court that kind of lays out mutual ground rules about people not uh, selling the farm and taking the kids to Kansas and doing all these things while the case is going on. So those are all examples of restraining orders, but they're not protection orders. Mm -hmm. 
protection orders are much more limited and think of the idea of a protection order as this is all I want to do. It's not part of anything bigger mm -hmm. and I'm in charge of it. And you being in charge of it means that you have the burden to prove to the court that you should get such an order.